Hello everyone. Today we are having Ms. Divya Thomas from Germany. She has completed her master's in biomedical engineering. Uh, thank you, Divya, for joining us today. Can you please start with a brief introduction about yourself? Yeah, thank you for giving me this opportunity. Uh, my name is Divya Thomas and I graduated from Government Model Engineering College on 2018 in Electronics and Biomedical Engineering. And after that, by 2019, in April, I started my master's in Germany. Now I'm doing uh, my master's in Medical Systems Engineering. And currently I'm doing my internship in a company called B. Brown. So I'm working basically with navigation system of Central Venus Catheters. So you are working after completing your course, right? No, no. Uh, here to do an internship, uh, we should uh, do in between our studies. So we can't do internship after our studies. We should do in between the studies. And after the internship, you can continue uh, in the company with a thesis or you can go back to the university and do the thesis there. So it's up to you. So it's always better to do an internship because I don't have any work experience from India. And so I thought, OK, before graduating to gain some work experience, I thought I'll do some internship. So that's okay, why okay. I ended up here. So actually, it is one of the most uh, requested session. Many people are looking for doing higher studies in Germany. So of course, uh, I think the expense might may be the one of the interesting part. Majority of the people are selecting Germany because many uh, institutions are not need to pay the fee, right? So how is this country selection is coming up? Uh, to do masters in Germany, we have two options. We can either go for a public university or go for a private university. So in Germany, there are three types of institutions. So we can study in a university. So there will more uh, it will be a research side with more theoretical those who want to do research and development. And the next one is Fachhochschule. It's like a diploma because it's like master's in engineering. But the thing is like if we can do more practical works with more labs and sections and everything. And the next one is arts. To get uh, into a public university, the main criteria is we need a mark of 2.5 GPA in German grading system. So we know in India we have CGPA where we have from 1 to 10 and 1 is the worst and 10 is the best. But here it's like opposite. So here from one is the best and five is the worst. So we need 50% of mark as 2.5. So I did my graduation from Kusat University. So it's like if you have an eight, it will be around 2.5. So those who have about 2.5 or cut off at 2.5, you can apply directly to a public university and chance of getting into public universities are higher. But if you have a mark below 2.5, you can definitely apply the are possibilities to get, but uh, it's less. So uh, it, it here, the publicly funded universities and privately funded universities um, select students based on their CGP. But to get into a private university, it's much easier, but there will be a tuition fees, like around seven lakh Indian rupee, but there is no cutoffs. Like even if you have uh, below 2.5, like 3 or 3.2, you can still apply and you can get into a private university. But to study in a private, public university, the main criteria is mark. Okay. And you, we don't have to pay any fees. It's like completely funded by the uh, by the government. Yeah, I think that's why most of the students are looking into getting to Germany. And one more thing, yes. when we are uh, planning to do higher studies in Germany, I think German language is also a factor. I have seen uh, we need to know German language or many students are uh, studying German language. So what is that importance? German is a must in Germany. I have seen many students who came here with, you know, agencies. They told like, OK, if you have uh, courses in English, you don't have to do German. No, you have to do German because uh, we have German taught course as well as English taught course. To uh, study an English taught course, we don't need German. They'll, maybe some university will ask for like a, an A1 certificate. In German language, we have different levels, A1, A2, B1, B2, C1, and C2. C2 is the most, you know, like German people talk, and A1 is the basic stuff. So they'll ask for an A1 certificate and IELTS score. But to survive in Germany, you need German. Everything, like even in bank, all the records, even the house contract, even the Wi-Fi, phone, to get a doctor's appointment, everything you need German. Because even though people know English, they won't speak. 
they love their language so they want us to also learn language if you need to work in german you should learn german yeah when like i had a me, session yeah when i had a session on last time on sweden based he opted sweden only because of this german language issue yeah it is very important and to get an internship or get a thesis to get a job it is very important for for example for we are biomedical engineers so to get into an rnt maybe we need a1 or a2 because rnt most people will be like will be on their phds or master students and they know german but if you are planning for a technical side say service or sales or hospital technician we need till b2 because we are talking with germans like yeah. they don't know english they so don't know talking. english so definitely they won't talk yeah so you were talking about the different opportunities like uh, sales or service so of course when we are looking for uh, a, a, you know a job in germany so what are the areas we can apply for or what are the opportunities we have uh, okay so yesterday i searched in glassdoor to just see like how much opportunities a biomedical engineer have in germany so it's we have around 1400 opportunities per day in germany okay. we can work it's it's a lot like we can work anywhere we can work even in as a technician or as a sales uh, person a service person and in hospitals and regular traffic it's a one of the main uh, point regular traffic yeah, actually and, i need to add that even i received a query in uh, instagram today uh, when i mentioned about the discussion so it was the query mm-hmm. i received about the opportunities in regular traffic we have lots of opportunities because in my uh, like the company which i'm working bay brown uh, they are they need regulatory affairs people because now they have the, it's a like new scheme mdr i'm not very much aware of that uh, so they are rechanging the european union medical device regulations so it's like a lot of work so they need people and they prefer biomedical engineers for that and we can also work in production quality r and d like research and development like what i'm doing in a company so basically we have job opportunities in various field and also we can um, you know go for different areas for example if we took biofabrication or uh, biotechnology or maybe a laser or photonics or ai embedded system deep learning so we can still, still we have a basis in biomedical engineering we can go to any any area that's the main advantage which i feel because any a, any device work with maybe electrical electronics mechanical or software we can do masters in electrical engineering and work in a biomedical company so we know more than a biomedical engineer because we yeah. already have a masters in electrical engineering yeah we so will be having upper hand combo yeah yeah and when uh, you are working in germany of course the part of europe so what is the possibility of applying jobs in the different countries other than just germany i think there are around 40 plus countries in europe so is there any way we yes. can work there we can work everywhere we if we can we can even work in india it's not a problem we can apply like if you are applying from india we can apply to different countries so it's the same as german the thing is like we have a german degree with us so it's it, it's like an add on we can even work in uh, like netherlands switzerland sweden anywhere Uh, and one of my friend who graduated now uh, he is he also study like me he have masters in medical systems and now he is working uh, as a medical systems engineer in, in netherlands another friend is working in india so we can definitely work so there will be some visa visa issues like we have to change the residence permit from germany to the country you are choosing it's not so, a big deal yeah, you can definitely Europe, uh, the visa is uh, different for each country Yes, yes, yes. Visa regulations are uh, different for each country. For uh, the thing with visa is like I, we have a Schengen visa now for students. So there are Schengen countries, like twenty six Schengen countries, and we can go and visit the countries without visa. We can just go and you know yeah, even come I have back. Seen people are visiting, maybe just like exploring the different countries. I have. Seen that. Yeah, that's the main advantage of being in Europe. like germany have around you know nine countries around you can go to okay today night i'm get taking a train and tomorrow morning i'm in italy paris france it's, so it's you can only apply for job in the as well so even without visa yes so i we can that, apply for the job and if you get a job offer letter then you have to register in that country yeah i think and that's the, the biggest thing you are having yeah 
and of course when we are looking for a job salary is also matter so i think people will be interested on that as well so what is the average salary we can expect after completing our masters okay for um a research and development engineer the average average salary will be from 3k euros to maybe 7k euros like it it will increase with our you know knowledge and if you have a management degree also and if you have with our experience it will increase so starting salary we can expect a 2.5 to 3k euros so it's like around 2 lakhs in the rupee and for a technician or um or in, in a hospital we can see for around like 2k to 4k so that's the range because even as an intern we'll get around 800 to 1600 euros in oh. hand so it's you will get a very good pay if you come oh. with india yeah of course those who are watching uh, the media will be also interested how to get into germany so that's also very important so what are the yeah. basic requirements to plan a higher studies in your perspective uh there are around eight steps if you ask me the first one is to find a university that is the you know most difficult part because even if we know like we graduate as a biomedical engineer we don't know where to apply and which course to choose from so first of all if you are if you are planning to come to a country what you have to do is uh, search for the job opportunities in that country and merge your bachelor studies and the job opportunities and take a course accordingly and uh, while choosing a university uh, for example you have to see whether it is publicly fund or privately fund whether the university have uh, there are three semester courses and four semester courses so for three semester we have to uh, have 90 credits and for uh, semester it's like 120 credits 90 credits means 60 credits we have to give exam and 30 credits for thesis so similarly for 120 we have to give exams for 90 credits and 30 credits for thesis and in some universities we can have voluntary internship or compulsory internship so we have to choose which internship the course offer in some university we can have only thesis in the university you can't go out and do the thesis and in some cities if you are planning your higher studies in a city there's a very good chance of getting part time very easily so these are the things which we need to you know uh, think about when choosing a university once you choose a university you have to see whether you are eligible for that so for that you have to see okay whether you are on the mark is it like 2.5 or it's above it's well and good if it's below 2.5 also you can definitely apply you can try and the thing is like you have to give a ios exam like whether the um, requirements is like you have to give a ios exam and german level you have a rework experience it's is everything is like add ons uh, or if you done the projects or major courses everything you can add on the next thing is german language you should definitely go for a german language not like duolingo or something like small app you have to go to a coaching center and do ex- uh, classes and give exams and then to apply to a university uh, there's two methods Uh, the first thing is we have to look into dad.de d a a d dot d this is the basic uh, website which contain all the information about all the german universities and all the courses so you have to search in dad and shortlist your universities and you have to see whether this university applications is through university portal or via uni assist there are two type we can apply to a university like two two ways once we are university portal we just have to upload our uh, statement of purpose letter of recommendation uh, then our work experience ielts like degree certificate everything we got we just have to upload them second way is via uni assist so it is similar to ega um, chalagam in our place so it's a platform where we can f- uh, upload all the scanned documents and we can select the universities and we can send to those universities so to start we just have to download or search uni assist and start an account and you know randomly select the universities and send them so it is like the selection criteria so if you are not meeting the requirements they won't send your application to the university and uh, you you can get a rejection from uni assist and for uni assist we have a fees it's like 75 euros we have to pay for the first time and for each next applications we have to pay 30 euros 30 euros 30 euros and for some universities we also have to send um, hard copies to the universities directly uh, 
So since I graduated from uh, Kusat University, we also have to send transcript where uh, it will mention the mode of instruction and the total credits. So we have to go to Kusat and ask for uh, like uh, ask for the transcript, and they'll give us, and we have to send this too. So uh, and yeah, if once you get offer letter, then we start processing. So you That's applied it. through any agency, or you directly applied through website? I directly applied. It's okay. it's very easy because uh, like Germany is known as the land of poets and thinkers. It's also the land, land of rules and regulations. Everything is clear cut. You don't need to, you know, everything is in the website. Everything is in that German embassy website. You just have to uh, like thoroughly focus on really motivated. Then we can do it. Everything by ourselves. Okay. So if we are getting into the public university, of course, there is no tuition fee. Otherwise, if we are getting to the private university, is there any uh, scholarship possibility? Yes. Even in public universities, there are scholarship possibilities. To know about scholarship also, you can search on dad.d. There, they provide all kinds of scholarships available in Germany. And of course, you can also get scholarships from the universities. But to get a scholarship from a German university is really hard because, you know, since they have a cutoff of 2.5 and since they don't have a tuition fees, the students coming here will always have a good mark like around 1, 1.3. Uh, so to get a German university, we should excel in a bachelor's. We need nine pointers, 9.5 mark. And we should very active, like extracurricular activities. We should be socially responsible. We should provide so many certificates, like we are eligible for the scholarship. So it's like a bit hard to get, but yeah, there are a lot. Okay. So what about the coursework that you are having for different subjects? or the internship pattern, or the project, or assignment? Uh, okay, so I took medical systems engineering, and it's like a four-semester course. I'm doing in a university. So it will be research-oriented, and um, uh, the thing is, like we have 90 credits, we have to write exams, and 30 credits as thesis. So in this 90 credits, we have around nine compulsory subjects, and around um, eight electives. So this compulsory subjects will be mainly math, uh, deep um, statistics, and uh, project management. So something like that. So it will vary upon the courses. So some courses, there will be different uh, you know, modules. And with electives, we can have um, choose like in which field you want to work with, like if it's like medical instrumentation or biosignal processing, tissue engineering, or MEMS. So we have like different categories and we can select like which deepening you want to take. And since, and you can take a project uh, based on that deepening and you can work with that to get into a company. So, so what were your selection when you, or when, what are the courses you shortlisted while applying for different universities? Uh, different universities, I mainly choose for like biomedical engineering itself. So, but I prefer to, for the students who are, you who wish to pursue masters in Germany, I prefer to choose something, you know, more narrowed, like an electrical engineering in biomedical field, like an uh, a biofabrication, so something which is lasers and photons. So that uh, in, in in when we apply for a job, we can apply to different perspectives. So that's one main advantage. And since I chose medical uh, systems itself, we have the same course, same coursework as what we had in bachelors. So the extra ones are like CT. So we have a complete 10 credit big CT program that we have to go to lab and take CT of our head and we have to, so it's like, it depends upon how the course. Other than Which medical course system, you any other uh, course you have shortlisted earlier? No, other than I only, only shortlisted. Yeah, this was my focus. I was, okay. Actually, I focused on yeah, medical systems and lasers and photonics. I got acceptance, but I uh, okay, I don't know. I yeah. didn't went for lasers and photonics okay. and for my application, I got rejected. When I had a session on USA and Sweden, uh, they were telling like it is mostly open book exams. So what is the situation there? It's also like open book exam or you have to, uh, you know, buy hard and write or other I wrote 17 exams altogether for my master's and there were one open book exam. And the thing is like, we can't even answer one question from that book. 
it is very difficult german education system is very difficult to pass okay. so that's the main reason because i know many dropouts those who couldn't complete the course or those who fail three times and forced to go back to india it is hard so we need to put a lot of focus and everything to pass the exam there was one open book test but they'll specify like which books you can bring and those books will be german so we can't understand anything so that's the one thing and for oral exams and for written exams also we have to really learn the concept and understand the concept then only we can answer the question so we will so be writing in english nothing is like... direct yes yes I, i'm doing an english short course so i can do it in english that the main thing with german short courses it is very difficult we can we have to learn uh, in german write exams in german give presentations in german do thesis in german it is very tough uh, so i just need to clarify one more thing this english short course also a uh, fee waiver is also there right yes fee waiver is for all international students it's it's okay. just based on the university's public or private okay. for a german could talk, the thing is like to get into a german taught course is easy they don't have 2.5 uh, margin That's so okay. if you if you have a low uh, mark also you can get into a german taught co- course it is very easy to get in not very easy it is easy to get into a german taught course but the thing is like everything will be in german and It, so we should be good in german as well right yeah. yeah we should need at least b2 okay of course when we are doing our studies our expenses are also a matter so what about your living expense um okay so uh, for for a one year course in germany for a student coming from india we have to show a blocked amount of 10332 euros Uh, as a block demand that is our one year's expenses so uh, how we can do is like we have different uh, you know institutions like fintiba or coracle and we have to block our am- amount in this um, it's an app actually and after coming to germany we have to open the bank account here and we can transfer 861 euros per month so it's already it's blocked they won't give the complete amount so every month they'll give us 861 euros so we can survive with that amount or you can definitely go for part time jobs and uh, i took student loan personally so you can always go for any nationalized bank to get a student loan i prefer nationalized bank because interest rate is low for other private banks interest rate will be higher so getting uh, this loan is is what is, is it any difficult part to get a loan uh uh the thing is like uh, mainly the bank uh, when bank looks we don't have fees in germany so actually they can't issue uh, a money for living expenses like if you see for uk or canada the, what bank is doing is they'll give the uh, fees fees and they'll send directly to the university so we can't touch them on but here what we have to do is we have to go to the german embassy and there it is mentioned every student should provide should block an amount of 10332 euros in their account before coming to germany so we can take the print out and we can show it as a proof otherwise you can ask to uh, international uh, student office in the university if you get uh, if when you get an offer letter and you can ask like give me a detailed you know uh, living expenses um sheet or something then they'll send you and with this paper you can apply for the loan so they should give you the loan yeah okay in uh, so indian amounts so what will be the approximate expense we are having in a, in a year uh one year uh, like uh, okay i'll say the total expenses which um i had like, now for a student who is coming now it will be around 11.5 to 12 lakhs So in this eleven point five to ah uh, yeah in the rupee eleven point five to twelve lakhs I N R so here the nine lakhs will go to the blocked account for our one year expenses and this two lakh will be the language courses if you are doing any language courses the exams visa processing we have to give like eighty euros for visa processing and flight ticket for shopping if we calculate everything it will be around one point five to two lakhs and the one thing is if you have a p a pr holder german pr holder as a relative or a friend you can ask him to give a letter of commitment so if he gave the letter of commitment with his past 3 months uh, salary slip you don't have to show this 10000 euros 
So you can just go and study in Germany with two lakhs. You can go study and come back. It's just like we are doing masters in India. Okay, it's Let's better see. having some relatives, right? Yeah, and they should, you know, uh, they'll also get some complications if you do something. So they'll, yeah, yeah. They, you should, there should be a very good friendship for relatives. That's yeah. It will. And you were talking about the part time job that you were doing. So, what are the mm-hmm. different part-time job possibilities we are having along with our uh, course? And what is the is there any time limit? When I was doing the Sweden session or US session, there was some time restriction. We can work only, for example, ten hours for twenty hours per week. Yes. So, in our visa, we are getting a student visa, so we can only work for one twenty full days or two forty half days. So it's around two twenty hours per week. So we can only work for this much hours per week, and we can either work in a university as a working student, as a research assistant, or some uh, something like that, and in a company like uh, as a working student or a research assistant, or other like uh, KFCs or restaurants, Amazon, pizza factory. Like there are plenty of job opportunities, but German is a must. To work outside, you need German to talk and communicate with them. So it's it's possible. We can. Uh, go for part time, and if you ha- are getting a good money, then you don't have to touch your block de- block remote. You can use it for next so year. You were talking about we need German language there as well. So can we manage English too? No, no, no. If you need a part time, if you are in Berlin or if you are in Hanover, like bigger cities. You can survive with English, of course, because most of them know English. But if you are going to a rural area. Like Steinfurt or like now Melsungen. So here we need German. So without German, you it's very hard to get a uh, part time. Yeah, and one more thing: when we uh, have to, when we need to work there, we need this of course. So how is the mm-hmm. uh, after completing the course, how long we can stay back uh, before getting a job? So what is the procedure? Okay. Okay. Once we uh, graduate. We are no longer students, so our student visa will be cancelled, and we'll get a job seeking visa. It is for eighteen months. If you get a job within the eighteen months, you can stay here. Then it will convert to a job visa or work visa. And for a master student uh, uh, who did their masters in maths or engineering or nursing or something like that, you can uh, apply for a blue card. To apply for a blue card, you need forty three thousand three hundred. 300 euros per annum as a salary so if you are getting above 43300 you can apply for a blue card once you are a blue card holder after 21 months to 33 months you can apply for a pr then if you once you get a pr or you are permanent resident after 8 years you can apply for a citizenship then you are german citizen but you can't hold dual citizenship because india don't have dual citizenship but germany have dual citizenship but we can't have that because india don't have Okay. So it's it's like, but those who are not doing masters in Germany, they have to work here for five years to get PR. Okay. So that's the thing. But if, since I did my masters here, I just have to wait for twenty one months after I get my EU, uh, blue card. For blue card, you need a job above forty three thousand. But you should be able to get because for everyone who are completing masters will get above forty three thousand. So okay, and currently I'm from India. Is it possible for me to get a visa if I'm able to get a job there? Yes, yes. You can uh, do it by uh, like you can all come here for six months as a job seeker, and you can uh, and see like whether some jobs are uh, like opportunities are there, and you can go to company. You can do interviews. Uh, you can apply, and you can go do interviews. And once you get a job, you can convert it to a job visa. Otherwise, you can directly apply from India. And if you get a job uh, in Germany, you can ask the company to provide a job visa, and they'll do the work, and you can directly go to. Come to here and do the job. It is oh, possible. Yeah, of course. And you did your uh, B.Tech in India, and you have done your masters in Germany. So, how do you feel the difference, or the advantage you had there, or the difference you feel in India? Anything to add on that? Uh, actually, I, it has both advantages and disadvantages. Uh, the first thing is like emotional advantage. In India, we are around our people, we are around our language, so it's our teachers. So it's it's like we have that advantage. But here, you are all alone. You are do, doing everything by yourself. You are 
searching everything by yourself so we will be more independent and when we think about education system in germany and in india india it's like a tunnel so we get into tunnel in lkg and we pushed out as an engineer but here it is not like that so here we have different levels those who don't have to do a degree don't have to do a degree education system is entirely different of course so there we have to do everything is compulsory module we don't have any electives so we can't choose but here we can choose and we can mold our, ourselves for for example one of my friend she was doing she did her bachelor's in biomedical engineering and she did her master's in biomedical engineering as well and she did her internship in siemens but she did internship in ai that's where she understand like she have a great interest in ai now she is working with ai but when if you are studying in uh, in india we don't have that opportunities they we don't have compulsory internships we don't need to do internships at all but here when we do uh, you know practicum if you when we talk with people we can really understand what we really need so it's it's good yeah, so, so how's going it's your easy. german life right now exploring the different countries so uh, studying with different people from different countries um okay first of all if when i say i'm an indian everyone wants to know about our culture that's the main thing because uh, they do have an indian friend but he will be from mumbai so they okay you both speak same language no we speak with different language so you have both have same culture no no we have entirely different culture so it's like they they are very keen to know about our culture because they, and i'm like yeah it is big we have so many people and it's like from up to down it's entirely different culture so first of all we'll explain about our culture and our food they are always like masala masala del coras masala so it's like we have different types of masalas and uh, the the thing is like i have friend from um, iran so now i'm living with uh, mexican and lithuanian and so uh when we know about the culture it's entirely different when we say the like our concept our concept of family our concept of marriage our concept of education it's entirely different from us so uh, from there so it's it's nice so it's the one of the you know main advantage of going to an abroad even for work or even for uh, studies you are out of your comfort zone so you yeah. know like of course, yeah, uh, this yeah. video will be watching by many uh, engineering students those who are planning to study in germany or uh, what is the yes. advice you are having to them okay um, i have many tips for them in fact uh, first of all if you are planning to come to germany give as much as applications Uh, you can uh, because uh, the we can we can't say like we will get into one particular university so you try to get you try to apply to as much as universities you can and the next thing is choose lesser known places because if you choose like berlin or hanover like very big cities it will be difficult for uh, you to compete there will be many people so less known people less known places or less known um, universities will give you more opportunities so it's a better advantage and always if you are doing a biomedical engineering don't stick to you know like i have to do to masters in biomedical engineering itself if maybe you have an interest in electrical engineering so try to do electrical engineering and work in a medical device company with as an electrical engineer you can do that as an as a mechanical engineer because i, I have many friends who did a bachelor's in biomedical and now they are doing mechanical and they are doing like uh, in a medical company they are doing working as a mechanical engineer so it is possible and uh, and i i think uh, i told about taxes in germany no did i yeah because like even if i say we we can get like around 4000 euros it's like gross amount so we won't get this 4000 in our hand so we have to pay 40 percentage of taxes it's like we'll only get half of the amount in our hand the thing is like in germany there is a system younger generations are looking for the older generations so what we are earning now we are giving part of our money as their pension so we will give money and they'll get the pension so when i get old i'll get pension by the working class group of at that time 
So we are looking after our older generation. So we'll have to pay around 40 percentage as a, as taxes. So I just taxes. want to this is- add one question on this. So we will get sufficient money on that. The package would be good enough. How it is? Yeah, package will be good enough. But it's like it's not like we can't we can get super rich in one year. We can't get. Like uh, as I told, it's the land of rules and regulations. We sh- we will somehow will spend the amount here in Germany itself. Yeah, of we course. can. We yeah, we'll get a very good pay. In fact. Yeah, and those who are planning to apply the how we can stand out from others. Something having important things in our resume, something like that, you can stand out. Uh, first thing is mark. Uh, if you have a very good mark, then there's a very good possibility to get into a good university. The th- next thing is like um, IELTS score and maybe you can give GRE exam. So it's, it's, it counts and do as much as projects you can and do it in a better way. Like don't do because you have to do. Do it because you want to do. And the thing is like uh, try to gain internship and work experience. So yeah, it's basically I think extra like all other activities countries. also important. Yes, yes, extracurricular activities are also important. Like even if you have a low mark, you can you know uh, equate it with extracurricular activities and GRE, and maybe you can take different kinds of courses like AutoCAD, CAD, like uh, C, C plus plus, MATLAB, Python. You whatever things you deep learning, you can learn more things and like. We're like okay, I have done this much. I've not wasted any time of in my life. I have done this. I have learned so many. So you present yourself like yeah, I am worthy of coming here. And then you definitely. And uh, one more thing, I know that you are supporting those who are looking for higher studies in Germany. What are the way you can support those who are looking for higher studies in Germany? Uh, okay, so I have seen some uh, like agencies who you know ask for around two point five lakh to three lakh as their commission to get a student into Germany to, but to a private universities. It's too much. Like you can't cheat anyone like that. It is really easy to apply to Germany uh, to Germany. So I'm doing an initiative with my friend. So if you if any of you are planning to come to Germany, you can contact us and we'll give the guidance. Of course it's paid because we are spending our time on this for for so what we have we are doing like if you have a course in your mind we'll help to choose the universities right universities and if you uh, for the application we'll help, we'll guide to how to do the application and we'll give the sample letters of sop uh, letter of recommendations and everything and we'll say, like how to apply via UNESCO. like we can apply here like you don't have to, you know, put lump sum amount in the university. We can all, always help. And if you want to send hard copies to different universities, you can send to us and we can send it from here. It's much cheaper. And for the visa processing, like how to do the applications and to get visa slot. After coming here, we'll also help to, you know, get an accommodation. And yeah, basically we'll guide you. We won't do application. You have to do it by yourself. So it's easy. You can do. And we'll make a sure like you know the every step of applications to coming to Germany. So it will be, like, make it I'll, much easier. Right? Yes, yes. Okay. If you anyway, if you wish, you can contact us. Of course, I will uh, share your contact details in the description. Uh, you can check it there as well. And thank you, Divya, for joining okay. us today. And thank you for sharing your value to not us. Okay, thank, thank you. you for the opportunity. And I'm very happy that you, uh, you know, messaged me, you are get, doing a great initiative to support biomedical cleanliness. And thank you for that. And yeah. yeah, all the best for your future and the people and the students who are seeing this. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, then. Bye-bye.